Now for more on the possible new tariffs coming out of Washington, I'm joined here in studio by John Gong. He's a professor of economics at Beijing's University of International Business and Economics. Thank you for joining us. Sure, welcome. So let's unpack this quite a bit. We know that um, a lot of companies, hundreds of companies, in fact, have written responses to these proposed tariffs. Why such apprehension against this particular round of tariffs? Altogether, 1,600 companies wrote to the uh, uh, USTR and they're scheduled to make testimonies in the next seven days. And I think this issue is really important for a lot of business out there in the United States. It's really a life and death issue here uh, because, it, you know, the, the, the exports from China to the United States covers a lot of products. It's a $500 billion business and uh, it's going to impact a lot of people, uh, employment as well as uh, people's pockets uh, in the United States. On average, uh, if the tariffs are going to be imposed, on average, uh, each family is going to pay out of their own pocket additional $2,000. You know, that's a lot of money for a lot of American families. At a time, for a lot of people, it's even difficult to cough up something like even $400 on occasional expenses. So that's a huge amount of money, huge impact on a lot of people. So, so given the amount of money, not just in trade, but obviously the fallout for, for American citizens, Chinese citizens as well, do you expect these written responses and these, this testimony from the USTR hearings, do you expect it to, to sway the Trump administration? Um, well, it didn't work last time, as we know it. Uh, this is the second time USTR carried out these extensive hearings. Um, but I think uh, this time might be a little bit different because President Trump is facing a lot of pressure. It's um, a lot of pressure from corporate America, as well as a lot of voters, actually. People are starting to realize that uh, this is starting to come into, coming back to hit their pockets. Uh, I think especially in those um, states in the, in the Midwest, agriculture states, uh, the agriculture exports to China right now is almost drying up to a trickle. So uh, a lot of, far, I mean, the, the, the farmer bankruptcy rate has gone up in recent months. So I think, it, you know, eventually these things will come back to haunt him. Uh, so eventually I think uh, President Trump is facing a lot of political pressure, let alone he is we're getting into the campaign season right now. So I think maybe this is a little bit different. Uh, hopefully, uh, there can be some kind of agreement between President Xi and President Trump. At least we need to close this uh, dispute very right. soon. Otherwise, uh, things are going to be very ugly. Now, clearly, a lot of, a lot of maybes are still in play as, as we get ready for the G20 summit. But now, the, the tariffs are reportedly supposed to take effect after July 2nd, which is when the rebuttal period ends. Mm -hmm. But with such a quick turnaround, if these, in fact, do come into play, what does this mean not just for the U.S. and China's economies, but a lot of these global supply chains? Yeah, well, um, I think um, one of the objectives of the Trump administration is to try to drive uh, corporate America's operation back to home, or if not, at least out of China. I think this is a very clear objective. But the thing is that uh, it's very difficult to break up the global value chain that has been you know, uh, uh, in operation for decades, not just a few years. And it's not that easy. China still represents a very good place for manufacturing. A bulk of the world's manufacturing capacity is still located in China. And infrastructure is actually very good in terms of you know, roads, port access, very reliable electricity supply. All these things uh, are not that easy to find in other countries. There are some operations already moving out of China. Um, you know, we know about this, um, what's called a, a new economic geography theory that predicts uh, production, uh, uh, manufacturing is clustered and tends to move from country to country historically. So some of the manufacturing activities are already moving out of China. That's uh, uh, understandable. Right. But I think uh, this kind of a scale in such a quick um, uh, amount of time, that's just unprecedented. It's not going to happen overnight. And, you know, the corporate, corporate America is going to suffer. And we've already seen Walmart saying, look, if these tariffs come to be, we're passing these costs on to consumers. And But you also have some of these smaller companies saying, well, I don't know if I can expand, if I can hire more people. In right. terms of the broader economic consequences, what could we be looking at since we don't have a foreseeable end in sight? Um, well, first of all, you know, we're going to see prices going up at Walmart and Costco and those places. Second, I think a lot of investment decisions are being, being holding back now. Because, uh, because of uncertainty, uh, whether we're going to have a deal or not, whether China still remains to be a place for business. Uh, and also keep in mind that corporate America's operation in China is not just for a source of production. It's also a huge market. As a matter of fact, the China's consumer market is larger here 
than here in the United States. So um, for these companies to move out of China, that means they're also going to give up some of the Chinese market. And that's also a hit on their part as well. Um, there are cities, for example, in the United States that are, uh, you know, have a huge operation, uh, corporate headquarters here in the United States, but right. they have a huge corporation back in, um, in, in China. i just give you one example, a, a place uh, in uh, Cincinnati, in Ohio, which is a favorite state that uh, President Trump likes to quote about, you know, the loss of China trade. Right. But in the city of Cincinnati, uh, GE has a huge operation. Part of Gamble is headquartered in, in Cincinnati, but they have huge operations in China. Part of Gamble is the largest uh, personal hygiene products uh, in China. So, you know, this is a very complex picture. It's uh, uh, not as simple as, as President Trump uh, portrays. And right. I think um, American people need to understand this. They, they, it's, it's a complicated picture that people don't understand. But well, well, hopefully but, this discussion will, will further that. <laughs> Unfortunately, we'll have to leave it there. Sure. Thank you so much. Great having you on. That is economics professor John Gong from Beijing's University of International Business and Economics. Thanks so much.